In studio, Jim Linsenmeyer. We're talking economic development, and Jim uh, is uh, in charge of the Eastern Panhandle's three counties plus the five of the Potomac Highlands. Jim, good morning to you, sir. How are you? Good morning, Rob. How are you? I really should bring up your microphone so we can hear you, too. Okay, how's that? Good. Thanks for coming in, man. We appreciate it. Not a problem. You know, it's always fun to talk about economic development in the Eastern Panhandle because so many great things are happening. Because there's so much of it, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. It is uh, a place that a lot of companies have decided to be a good place to do business. And I know there's been a few over the years uh, that have come here and done this before Macy's decided to, but it seemed after Macy's made the announcement, it kind of opened up the floodgates. Is that a uh, misperception, or do I read that correctly? Well, I think the, the key to success, at least in Berkeley County, is I-81, and the folks that before me uh, had the, the vision to develop industrial properties up and down 81 mm -hmm. to match what Maryland and Virginia were doing. Yeah. The uh, the newest thing in economic development, and we were talking with Jenny Smith about this, uh, I guess, a week ago or so ago, is these incredibly large rectangular buildings that are popping up along interstates. There's two of them along I-70. There's at least one along 81 right now in Berkeley County. Uh, do, do development authorities develop these and then hope to attract someone into them, or are they a sign that someone's already had interest and this is where they're going to move? No, it's, it's strictly a private sector initiative that they buy the land, build the building. Sometimes they have a prospect or, or a tenant uh, already lined up. Uh, the ones in Berkeley County at Spring Mills and at Taylor Station were speculative. In other words, you know, entities built them in, hey, if we build it, maybe they'll come. And the same business model is true for from Chambersburg down through Hagerstown mm -hmm. and into Frederick County, Virginia. Is there a, uh, you have an estimate of what it costs to put up a building that size? Yeah, typically you're talking about uh, anywhere for from uh, uh, eighty to one hundred twenty dollars a square foot. Uh, so multiply that by five hundred thousand square feet or a million square feet. The one in um, and I have to be careful because some of these folks uh, look at that capital investment as proprietary but for instance you know something in the spring mills area that red rock is developing behind mm -hmm. the walmart you know that's a 70 to 80 million dollar investment it's about 830 some thousand square feet that's a lot to put up hoping someone will move in that's right but there's a lot of different partners that they've lined up you have a developer you have investment folks you have folks that uh, are on the marketing team how much economic development can this eastern panhandle area continue to support without getting the population growth that would that would provide a workforce to fulfill those jobs well as far as workforce everyone is facing the same problem regardless of where you are regardless of the county regardless of the state municipality everyone is facing uh, workforce shortages you know, some of that may be demographics. There may be more people exiting the workforce that's because of age than there are entering into the workforce because of a lower birth rate 20 years ago than there was 60 years ago. Mm -hmm. Bill, I know you've got some questions you want to get to regarding Jefferson County and some other things. Go right ahead. Yeah, uh, you introduced GM a second ago by saying growth in the uh, eastern panhandle. That's true but it's uneven growth. There's been more growth in Berkeley County than, um, than uh, Jefferson and, or Morgan. Uh, and Jim, you said I-81 corridor. Uh, that is true. We do have the I-81 corridor, but I don't think that's the, the whole picture. Uh, we also are business friendly. Uh, we've worked very hard with Macy's, with Procter & Gamble, Clorox, and I do agree. Uh, I was very much involved with the Macy's project. Uh, we were heavily, heavily vetted. Uh, we were competing with something like 140 different countries companies and we were told by the Macy's folks at the time that the fact we were so heavily vetted it would be a domino effect for other companies coming in and that's exactly what's happened but then I want to go across the county line uh, to um, to Jefferson County 
uh, they they keep saying bring business in, bring business in. But a couple ones recently, the uh, uh, Rockwall. There was a phenomenal pushback uh, with Rockwall against Rockwall by a vocal contingent in Jefferson County. We're seeing the same thing with the solar panels in Jefferson County. A lot of pushback. How much of this pushback is being recognized and being ingrained? And those businesses that are looking to come to the eastern panhandle are looking to come in specifically to Jefferson County. Well, it is a very competitive situation uh, when you measure Jefferson County versus counties, other counties, adjacent counties in, in West Virginia or Maryland or in Virginia. And certainly the fact that there's zoning in Jefferson County versus no zoning in Berkeley County contributes to what is developed in either one of those counties and also the close proximity to Interstate 81. Now with Jefferson County, you know, tourism is a much bigger part of their economy and small business development seems to be the direction of the local leaders. Uh, but when you look at uh, Tima, which is a, a, a direct foreign investment from, from Italy in the Burr Industrial Park, they just finished up about a $6 million uh, expansion project on top of their six million dollars or so initial investment and they've grown to about 50 or 60 employees and they're doing what specifically they they make manufacture building products for soil soil erosion and also insulation okay um, river riders uh, in near Harpers Ferry uh, just finished uh, at the end of last year a winter recreation facility again to help enhance those recreation activities i felt so bad for them jim because it didn't snow a flake last year after they finished uh, <laughs> i know you know what <laughs> they've really got their fingers crossed for this year trust yeah. me but they have sm snow making equipment um in the burr industrial park there in carnesville there's a flex warehouse project that's going up uh that will serve uh, small businesses uh, sure Solutions, uh, a gentleman that worked at uh, Royal Vendors, has built a 5,000 square foot facility, again, a, a small business uh, expansion. And at Summit Point, there's a lot, at Summit Point Motorsports and Training Center, there's a lot of opportunity not only to enhance recreation uh, opportunities and activities, but also build out that national defense support that they provide. So, in response to my question, I, uh, you're saying that Jefferson County is being quite successful bringing businesses, but smaller, more targeted business service oriented services. Yeah. yeah, so they uh, they have been successful for what they're planning for. Okay, so what they've been able to attract fits within their strategic plan. Uh, but you've got a lot of different municipalities within Jefferson County versus Berkeley County only has Hedgesville and, and Martinsburg where you've got what four or five in Jefferson County there's uh, appears to be potentially some resolution with this gas line coming under the Potomac River uh, that was something that Jefferson County has been kind of uh, planned for I know with the rock wall and some of the others uh, do you see that having a, a significant impact in Berkeley County, absolutely. So there was a decision out of the uh, Federal Fourth Circuit uh, that favored um, TC Energy, Trans Canada Energy, which has built the pipeline uh, going north to south through Pennsylvania and to meet up ahead there in Berkeley Springs. And I believe there's only four miles of pipeline extension that has to be built and that can be done in, in relatively short order and that's in uh in maryland correct the, yes the there extension was a, in maryland yeah there was a court case yeah. that held up um there's a walking path or hiking path that belonged to the federal government but managed by maryland and it's only 20 feet of right of way that uh, tc energy was looking for and now, the only, I believe, the only thing that could delay that is if, you know, plaintiffs appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court. But the U.S. Supreme Court has already set a precedent in a case called Penn East out of New Jersey. 
So Berkeley County will benefit a great deal, and I assume there'll be some spillover to benefit in Morgan and Jefferson as well. Yeah, now in Jefferson County, of course, the, the gas line goes to Rockwell, but it doesn't go any further east than Rockwell. But there is gas available in Middleway at the old 3M Kodak plant. Uh, gas, even though there's that supply line from about Cumbo Yards uh, to Berkeley Springs by the sand plant, I don't believe there's much um, that is available currently as far as distribution lines in uh, Morgan County. Okay. But it will tremendously help industrial development in Berkeley County because right now we're supply constrained and even existing businesses are supply constrained for expansion purposes. In your experience in dealing with companies that we're trying to lure in or trying to, to bring into to the area, in the hypothetical situation of um, Acme Industries, best known for the production of dynamite and anvils, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, My favorite company. And, and they're trying to relocate, and let's say they've got uh, 100 employees. And what are the key factors in, in your estimate and your experience are they looking at? Is it, is it things like the availability of gas, for example, or do they go into the best education systems and roadways and that kind of thing? It's First and foremost on their checklist, and some of these uh, RFIs can have 100 data points. Uh, and they don't look at a city or a county or a state. They're looking at a region. They're looking at a radius that could be 100, 200 miles within a given market. Uh, and certainly infrastructure, uh, uh, first you need, a, you, you need something to sell to them. You need a piece of land mm -hmm. that fits their requirements. Uh, whether or not it's 100 acres, 200 acres, flat, in close proximity to where they want to be. Now, yeah. is this land that Farmer Jones owns, and we know that Farmer Jones is willing to sell that land for this purpose? It, it could be existing land that's owned by the Berkeley County Development Authority. It could be an existing industrial park, or it could be Farmer Joe, and they may not have uh, determined whether or not Farmer Joe wants to sell his land or not. So oftentimes, people you know, figuratively knock on Farmer Joe's door and says, hey, look, would you like to sell your land? Mm -hmm. uh, now, infrastructure is, is the other critical uh, set of data points. Water, sewer, electric power, gas, et cetera. The other infrastructure that is critical to an industrial development is roads. You know, proximity to highways, airports, rail, river, et cetera. Especially when you go on to the western side of the state, when you've got the Ohio River, barge traffic, it can be critical to some industrial projects. You did not mention high-speed Internet, but I assume that's critical as well. Very yeah, critical. It, and it, yes, and it depends on the industry. If it's uh, a data center or a technology company, not only um, uh, the availability of fiber, but the redundancy uh, of fiber can play into that as well. A long time ago, when I was in the explosives business, my company was relocating to East Camden, Arkansas, which defines nowhere, but it's where you'd want to build an explosives manufacturing plant. And why the reason I didn't go was because the school systems out there, I was coming from Prince William County, Virginia, and going out there, the school systems were just terrible. And we had, our son was very young, so he opted not to go there. And the, the fact of underperforming schools here in West Virginia in general and in, in the Eastern Panhandle as well. Is that a, is that a hard thing to overcome or is it not really a factor in the decision making? Well, there's two decisions that have to be made. One by the company as far as workforce development. And we've got a great set of partners with uh, Blue Ridge Community and Technical College. And they were instrumental in helping us recruit Procter and Gamble, for instance, and Macy's, and Macy's, yep, and they've yep. been very helpful in helping us recruit businesses recently, like Clorox. Uh, James Rumsey is another great uh, partner as far as technical training, both secondary and post-secondary. Now, when it comes to the, you know, the elementary, middle school, high school. Uh, education, that is more of a factor determined or measured by families that are moving in. 
So if our, they're empty nesters or they, they haven't started a family uh, and they're moving into the area, uh, not a big deal, perhaps. Uh, but we do have to compete with, when families are looking at the area, whether or not they're going to move to, to Washington County, Maryland, or Frederick County, Virginia, or Berkeley County, or Morgan County, or Jefferson County. And they do look at those scores, if you will, uh, of the West Virginia schools versus Maryland and, and Virginia. And how about how how important an arrow is it in your quiver that we have a reduced in, uh, personal income tax now, in terms of drawing attention? As far as quite frankly, as far as the discussions we've had with companies coming in, it it doesn't come up because it's the the personal income tax to their for their employees. And again, you know, sometimes the younger folks migrate to Winchester area because they perception is there's more things to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and some of the families migrate to Washington County uh, because of the school systems. But I'm not certain yet that that personal income tax reduction is a factor. Uh, kind of follow up to John's question. Uh, pilot uh, has been embraced, pilot program, been embraced in Berkeley County, uh, has been criticized some in Jefferson County. Is that an issue that is determinant for some of these companies coming in? Yes, you know, one of our, our challenges, and we are careful at the state not to mention the P word to the client. We let the client uh, bring that up because that's a local decision. Those are local taxes that are collected and the vast majority of it, 80 some percent, goes to the school system. So we, we let the counties enter into those discussions, but certainly, especially the personal property tax on equipment and inventory can be a deciding factor uh, when you look at Maryland versus West Virginia and Virginia. And the folks in Maryland have a lot more arrows in their quiver when it comes to incentives. And in Virginia, the counties have more flexibility when it comes to uh, tax abatements and discounts. So uh, so you folks were pulling very hard for passing Amendment 2 uh, last time, which would impact the uh, inventory tax. Yeah. I serve at the will and the pleasure of the governor. <laughs> <laughs> who, was, who was against all the amendments, Bill, if you remember. Yes. Uh, Jim, let's... But, but uh, Craig yeah. Blair is a friend, <laughs> yeah. and I also... Can I respect his opinion. Jim, I didn't know you were so political. Good job. <laughs> uh, where does Mitch Carmichael fit in, in what you, with what you do, Jim? So, so Mitch Carmichael is our cabinet secretary mm -hmm. of the Department of Economic Development, and then Mike Graney is the executive director, and then Todd Hooker is the deputy director and is in charge of the domestic division. We have an international division, folks that help businesses export their products and services, and also that they try to um, help bring in foreign investment like the Rockwells, et cetera. So if you're bringing a company into one of the counties you're responsible for, does it go through Mitch's office first? or? Yeah, I, and I'm, re I'm in Mitch's office. So sometimes I... I, I mean, literally, you go to Mitch and say, hey, I've got this company. Does it get to that point where it's, where it's that controlled? Um, I normally handle things at the, at the ground level first mm -hmm. and then vet them because they're sometimes suspects in, versus prospects. So I'll, I'll vet those, uh, those prospects that come through my area. Mm -hmm. Sometimes those leads come through our Charleston office. Sometimes they come from our domestic division. Sometimes they come from our international division. So it's a team effort. It's not golf. It's more like uh, basketball, baseball, and football. Mm -hmm. uh, how greatly do these deals vary when you're talking about bringing different companies in? Are most of them pretty standard as to maybe 90% of the deals the same company to company, or are they really very independent? They're, they really vary by industry and size. And, you know, the other thing is some of them are publicly uh, traded companies. Uh, some of them are startups. Some of them are closely controlled companies. So they, they, they vary a core, uh, from one end to the other. How big does a company have to be before you get involved in it? Well, we do have a small business development center, and they get involved with startups and small businesses. Uh, normally, the projects that I'm working with are, you know, five to a hundred million. 
Okay. Hey, we've got about a minute left here, Bill. Did you have a final question? No, I don't. I very much appreciate you coming in, Jim, and giving some insight uh, because I see such a strong contrast between two adjacent counties, uh, Berkeley slash Jefferson, and I was looking to get some some sense of why one's been very successful with larger businesses and the other one has been less successful, but you tell me it's philosophy as much as anything in the county. Yeah, and as you know, Bill, you know, uh, Berkeley County has a long history of compatibility between uh, the residents and the industry. Yeah. Uh, many years ago, the same was true in Jefferson County because, for instance, Ranson had a lot of heavy industry. Uh, but uh, I would say that the there's a larger percentage of folks that have moved into Jefferson County versus Berkeley County. Jim, great to have you here. Thank you very much. Thanks so great much for coming here. in.